So to calculate the enthalpy of that reaction, we have to step back for just a moment and look at something that is profoundly important for these calculations, and that's the standard enthalpy scale for thermochemistry. So as soon as we see the, the word thermochemistry, we realize what the sign convention is going to be. That is, when heat goes into the system, it's positive. When heat comes out of the system, it's negative. So the way the standard enthalpy scale is created is that every single molecule that's involved in any reaction, and let's take acetylene, C2H2, we can measure the amount of energy required to produce acetylene from a combination of carbon, and here we take the standard state of carbon to be graphite, and we take the standard state of oxygen, hydrogen, and nitrogen to be their free gas phase state. That's the state that they exist in the atmosphere before they react with anybody or with any other species. And so that sets the enthalpy of formation scale at zero. So this plane represents the enthalpy of formation equal to zero for all of the species which, when taken together to create other molecules, start from that state, which means that their enthalpy of formation is identically equal to zero. Then we can combine in however different ways we want carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen to produce other molecules. So we can produce nitric oxide from nitrogen and oxygen, and we can measure its enthalpy of formation. So it will have a delta H of formation. And we indicate the standard state by the superscript zero, which is the same standard state we've discussed before. We can have nitrogen dioxide. It has a unique enthalpy of formation. And then there's another remarkable thing about this diagram, and that is look at CO2 and water. They have profoundly negative standard enthalpies of formation. And because of the fact that they exist at the lowest thermodynamic energy level, they're always the product of these hydrocarbon combustion reactions. That's why we can simply write any carbon-hydrogen reaction in oxygen produces CO2 in water, because the ultimate recipient of that chemical reaction sits at the bottom of that thermodynamic scale. So this then establishes the fact that we begin with enthalpy of formation of carbon in the form of graphite, of oxygen in its gas phase, in hydrogen in its gas phase, and nitrogen in its gas phase, and that defines the enthalpy of formation under standard conditions equal to zero for those compounds. Now there's one other analogy that's interesting to look at, and that is that the selection of the zero point for the enthalpy of formation is arbitrary. We could pick it anywhere we want, and because the conservation of energy holds for the formation of any chemical structure, it means we can pick it anywhere we want, but we choose it to be carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, and hydrogen in their standard states. Just as we pick altitude, this is sea level, and this is an arbitrary selection. But you know how important altitude is. If you're flying an aircraft, you want to know exactly how high you are and how high other land masses are, because if you don't have an accurate measure of your altitude, you can run into objects that are above sea level. And so there's a very careful calibration between altitude and the heights of each of these land masses. And we also need to be very, very careful about the definition of the zero point for enthalpies for the same reason. We want accurate calculations of the energy release in a chemical reaction. So let's do the calculation. 